Hello. So for um, section 1.1, it's the start with function. And um, the main thing you want to remember is y is the function of x. And a lot of times, instead of y in our equations, now we'll see f of x. But you can always switch it to a y if you're plugging in values, and you'd rather have the y. But the reason that f of x is nice is because you use c of x for cost, p of x for profit, r of x for revenue, and then you know what each of your equations are when you have more than one equation. And so that's one of the main reasons for the f of x symbols. To know if it's a function, if we look at these um, set up here, the x values are on top then f of x or the y values are on the bottom. As long as the x values do not repeat, then um, it's a function. The y values can repeat. Notice we have two nines and two twos, and that's fine. But x needs to not repeat. And that's how we also know what the input and the output or the dependent and independent variable is. The input is always the x values. And um, it cannot, in this case, be the y values because the y's repeat. So that means for 9, we have two different x values. And that's fine as long as for x, we don't have two values. And so your output would be y. So this is a function because the x values do not repeat. The Dependent variable is your y values. And the independent is the x values. One way of remembering is y depends on what x is. Because we plug it into the equation to get x. When you're looking at values written like this, remember the x is the value here. So x is negative 2. When x is negative 2, y is 5. So the other one, next one's asking f of 0. Well, that means when x is 0, what is y? 7. The last one says f of x equals 9. So it's doing the opposite. It's saying when y is 9, what is x? Notice we have two answers when y is 9. It's a negative 1 and a 2. And you would list both of them. The domain is always your inputs or your x values. And since you could count them, it's not 5 through 10 with all the decimals in between. It's a list of numbers. That means it's finite. But for the domain, you would list them negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. For the range, you would also list them. But if any repeat, you don't have to write them twice. So we have a 2. We have Five, six, seven, and nine. Usually they ask in numerical order. Sometimes they don't care. Uh, but you do not need to repeat the nine was there twice and the two. You don't have to put them twice. And it is a finite set because we can list them. So f of x equals negative 3x plus 2. And we want to just plug in some values. So if we do not have a table, we can still find the values by plugging it in here. Like the first one, we would just plug in 0 wherever there's an x. And then negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. And plug in a negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. And the last one, 
plugging in 1.2. Remember, always follow order of operation. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. In this case, we just have multiplication and addition, so multiplication is first. Negative 3 times 1.2 would be a negative 3.6 plus 2, or a negative 1.6. The next one, C is pricing and D is demand. So this would be our pricing, this is our demand. If P equals 3D plus 200 over 71, is P a function of D? Well, what that means is every time we plug in a value for D, well, we only get one answer for P. Yes or no? To decide, one way of doing it, you could plug a bunch of numbers in, um, but we can see when we plug in any number here, we're only going to get one possible answer. But we could also, because there's one value in the denominator and two in the top, this could be rewritten. P equals 3D over 71 plus 200 over 71. That makes that linear because the D and the P are both to the first power. So this is just a straight line. That means it's a function. Um, next one. Revenue R of X from the cell of X televisions is R of X equals 100X. So X is the number of televisions sold. When we plug that in, we get the revenue that we get from that. Find R of 20. So if we plug in 20, so if we multiply that, we get 2,000. But what is the 2,000? Well, when you're explaining it, that means we put in 20. So when 20 TVs are sold, the revenue is $2,000. So X was the number of TVs, which is what we plugged in. So 20 televisions are sold. The revenue is $2,000. Another one. Okay. There we go. Okay. Profit. So P of X, which is the profit from selling X boxes of candy bars. P of X equals a negative point or two tenths x squared plus 400 minus 10. Find and explain p of 100. So we plug in the 100. I think I already calculated that. Maybe. So we get 37,000. But what does that mean? You need to be able to explain what these mean. So we're plugging in 100. And 100 is our x value. Go back in the equation and see what x was. Well, x was boxes of candy bars. When 100 boxes of candy bars. are sold, the P of X was profit, profit is $37,000. So 
I think that's everything in this section.